Hello there, there Dubs and Dimes. And dimes. Welcome, Welcome to Basically Misled. I'm Dagny. And I'm Day. We give advice. 50% is life-changing, 50% will leave you crying in a stairwell by the end of the day. You decide which is which. Come procrastinate with us while we chatter endlessly about things you could probably just Google. Today's topic is alcohol and drinking the alcohol. Yes. I'm going to be honest, writing this show made me want to drink. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see by the end of the show. Do you also want to drink? Well, I feel like right now I'm at a place where I'm like, oh, that could be fun. But I'm also like kind of, eh, don't really feel it. Or like, I just, I don't want to have to deal with the process of getting out the alcohol and drinking it. So... I don't know. That's such a, I feel like that's a very small process. It is. I mean, there's stuff in our fridge right now I could literally oh, go get is. with a bottle opener. Yeah. Take five seconds. But I'm, like, so lazy. Wow. <laughs> also, yeah. I just, I don't want to fall asleep. It's just going to make me fall asleep, I feel like, unless I have more stimuli than you. That's true, because it's just the two of us. So yeah. You'll just fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about our first drinking experiences. I feel like, I don't, actually, I don't know how common it is to have your first drinking experience at college. I know a lot of people just have their first drinking experience, like, in high school. Right. I mean, I definitely know my parents, like, offered me alcohol when I was in high school, and I was like, no, that's fine. Like, I'm good. Yeah, same. I remember... Oh, gosh, golly, gee, I must have been a wee lassie. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I was, I was probably, like, 14, 15. Um, and, you know, like, how parents just, like, offer you something, like, because why not? And so I, like, took a sip of my mom's wine and was like, oh, God, that's so disgusting. Nope, not, nah, nope, nope. I think some parents offer it to their kids because they think the kids won't like it. Mm. And, it's like, when they're, like, younger, so they're trying to, like, put them off alcohol. I don't think that was ever my parents' motive. Knowing your parents, I wouldn't think so. But I hear that's, like, a thing. That's interesting. Because, like, also, like, in high school and even now sometimes, like, whenever I'm with my dad, I, like, joke I'm like, oh, got it. Like, I'm going to need some beer tonight. Or, oh, wine, count me in. You know, that kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. he's like, do you want some? Like, he genuinely asks me. And then I'm like, no, I don't. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, My dad's offered me alcohol. Yeah. Actually, like, like after I turned 21, that's when apparently it was appropriate to offer me alcohol. (laughs) Apparently, like, the law is just some, just a suggestion. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But when I first met you, you had no plans to ever uh-uh. drink. Yeah. That, that's true, Dagny. That's, I'm just remembering that now. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, our first drinking experience, mine was actually, it wasn't even on my 21st birthday, for mm-hmm. the record. Okay, and I, I don't know why I didn't drink necessarily in high school, but I feel like it was, like, towards the end of high school, after high school, I decided that, like, since I had had, they were, like, I currently was having issues with depression. I was, like, I'm only going to start to drink when I am in a place where, like, this won't become an issue. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I decided that I was just going to wait till 21 because it was, like, a kind of convenient date. I was pretty sure that by that time I would have, like been stable enough or something sorted everything out sorted everything out enough that I I wasn't worried about it it's it's kind of interesting that I did that and I'm kind of like I'm still not I don't I have mixed feelings about me doing that actually no but anyway so I decided like I'm gonna wait till my 21st birthday for mental health reasons like I need to be steady and it wasn't even, like, on my 21st birthday. It was, like, mm-hmm. several days after. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm, like, ready yeah. to go. We, like, planned it for that weekend. Right, it was the weekend. Yeah. Because we were, like, can't get drunk during class time. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I that was when I had my first drink. It was on several days after my twenty first <laughs> birthday, because you know the law is important to all of us here in America. I'm sure it's important to you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but so it was very it was a very good experience for me. I mixed it with like crystal light packets. I couldn't right. taste it at all. Yeah. And that was, yeah. So I had that. I Because I was drinking a lot of water with it. And it was just a fun time. I remember thinking that it was so much easier to talk. That's the one yeah. thing that I think that now is true. But I don't notice it as much as the, the first time that I drank. I was like, oh my god. Words just come out of my mouth. Because there's always a bunch of like thoughts in my brain. But getting them out of my mouth is like a process. Mm-hmm. But with alcohol, it was no longer a process. They just came right on out. Yeah. Huh. I'm really just remembering the table issue right now. Oh, my table issue? That's when my table issue started. So basically when I drink, something that happens when I drink, I think, is that my tolerance for things that annoy me becomes lower. And I'm, I'm less willing to tolerate those things. One of them, which happens to be sitting at the table <laughs> literally Dagny was like one drink in also she was having a really hard time holding her drink like she thought it was like too heavy or something oh yeah I forgot that yeah like she couldn't hold her drink she was like freaking out about that but she was just looking at me and I was kind of like what like you okay <laughs> and she's like I don't want to sit here anymore and I was like okay, we can, do you want to go somewhere else? She's like, yeah, over there. And, like, we went and sat on the floor. Yeah. But you just weren't into the table. No, I didn't like the table at all. I wanted to sit on the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember, because I was kind of, like, I was, like, a little bit shaky yeah. or something, and so I couldn't really pick up the drink. Mm-hmm. I drank it pretty fast, though. You did, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was... It was a good day. I don't think... I don't remember how many drinks I had, but like... It wasn't that many. Three? Maybe. Maybe, maybe yeah. three. Anyway. Yeah. Mine happened... Okay. It was middle or end of February. I think it was middle of February. So it was like a couple of weeks after Dagny's 21st birthday. And granted, my mom likes to say that Dagny is a bad influence on me because all of a sudden my friend turns 21 and I'm drinking. Yeah, um, it wasn't that I turned 21, it was that I started drinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But... I'm so proud of my influence on you. <laughs> Honestly, though, I had been thinking about it before that. Because, okay, so going into college... And most of high, well, like, I don't know. It was a decision I made a really long time ago. I was kind of just like, I don't want to drink ever. Like, I just, I'm not feeling it. But then, I guess once, like, more of my friends started drinking and I went to more part, like, I went to my first parties and I, like, saw how people were and I kind of was just like, I want to know what it feels like. To be drunk. Mm. So that when I see other people experiencing it, I know how they're feeling. And, um, like, I think I also felt in a safe enough environment in our apartment to do it. Mm-hmm. And not get alcohol from some sketchy person or something. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing is that I didn't want to drink in a place that wasn't my own home that I didn't feel safe in. Yeah. I've still actually never drank in a place that wasn't my oh wait no that's not true i i've had a drink in a bar but we also went to the airbnb and drank there in portland oh that's oh that's true actually there have been multiple places it's just the people yeah i haven't drank around people that i didn't know very well Mm -hmm. but yeah so my first one i don't i think did I just have ciders or did I have vodka as well? 
I don't remember. I think I had vodka and then I had ciders. Or maybe it was just ciders. What do you remember feeling about the experience? I remember feeling very, like, lightheaded. Hmm. And, like, really feeling that. Like, just being a little airy. Hmm. And then just wanting to talk to so many people. When I drink, I just want to text people and talk to, like, a bunch of people. I think I, re- I really liked moving around. I still yeah. do. I'm like, my whole body feels great, so I'm like, moving is so fun. <laughs> right. See, I really like that moving thing, but I remember the first time we drank tequila, we made, like, margaritas. And so I'm wondering if it is, like, the amount of liquid that was in it, like, the ice and everything that made me not feel this way. But I didn't get, like, super head buzzed. It was more like a body buzz, and I really liked that. Mm. Yeah, you say you feel vodka in your head. Yeah. Yeah. I have only drank, like, I think everything I've drank, except for the wine, is just considered hard alcohol. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. My favorite is vodka because it has a nice, like, kind of rubbing alcohol smell. It's not offensive to me at all. It's so bad smelling. My least favorite is tequila because to me it smells like rotten fruit and I Mm. can't taste it. But in the drink, no matter what it's mixed, I can smell it. And I hate the smell and so I won't do it anymore. See, that's so interesting because you are somebody who doesn't smell things. No, I have a terrible sense of smell. Right. And I am someone who, my nose and my mouth and gag reflex are connected to each other. I smell something bad, I can't eat it or I'm going to throw up. But I like tequila. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, even thinking of the smell makes me a little nauseous. (laughs) (laughs) That's ridiculous. But, and I haven't even had that much. What is your, act like, your favorite drink? Like, if you could only drink one thing forever, what would it be? Put me on the spot here, will ya? Um, Is what? it really that hard of a no. question? Because well, I like vodka. <laughs> well, yeah, see, I really like... If we're going... Man, because on one hand, I'm like, I really do enjoy cider. I would have I would have guessed cider. For yeah. You. Like, I enjoy that a lot. I think I can pace myself more. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I don't know. But it's also nice. Vodka's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. It's your love. Vodka's my love. Alcohol. It is. And for the record, I'm talking about plain vodka. Yes, I totally mix it with stuff. But, Mm -hmm. you know those vodkas that have, like, they're, like, flavored flavored. vodka, so basically there's sugar in it, but it doesn't, I can't, you can't, like, look at the bottle and figure out, like, what, how much sugar is in it, and, like, how that's No, it's very suspicious. It totally sketches me out, and I'm not into it at all, and I think flavored vodka is just weird. Yeah, I'd rather flavor it myself. I want to know what's in it. Right? Anyway. Also, yeah. It's just because I'm sort of anti-sugar. We, we're not shots people either. That's true. We like to drink, we like to mix our drinks no matter what we're drinking. Unless it's cider. I don't mix cider. I have to say, I have been tempted lately. I wonder if I should learn to take shots. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Well... Because, I don't know, for a dumb reason, (laughs) the dumb reason of that I don't want to drink a lot of, like, sugary beverages. Okay, yeah. And I've been having mixed feelings about artificially sweet beverages lately, so I'm like, what if I just, just did vodka and then just, like, drank water? But honestly, I don't think taking shots is a necessary skill for me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really find, like, okay, I get the appeal of shots, 
But I also drink my drink so quick that it doesn't really, like, it's. But yeah. I do consume a lot of lemonade when I do that. And that's a lot of sugar and yeah. liquid and stuff. I think that that would, it would, I would only want to take shots if I knew that I could down that much water just as fast. Which probably yeah. is not true. So I might just have to. Yeah, I don't like water when I drink. No. Like, I force myself to, but nah. But that's... It might work because... Okay, so my, my drinking... My drinking philosophy is to be as lightweight as possible. <laughs> to be yeah. the most lightweight. Because I don't actually know why this is, like, a thing where people are like, oh, you want to, like, drink the most that you can. And I'm like, excuse me, like... I'm in college. Do you think I want to spend more money on something like alcohol? No. I wrote down that my drinking philosophy is nice and tipsy on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even like a budget because later in life I'm still probably going to feel this way. Mm-hmm. We're like drink the least amount to get nice and tipsy. Yeah. And keep it that way. Like don't raise your tolerance that much. Right. Feel the maximum. Drink the least. Yeah. Also because I think... When I have a lower tolerance, when I've been drinking less, I think that I even if I feel it a lot, the next day I feel better. Like I don't feel as affected by it. And I think that's because then my body just like works through it and it's not like as much. Yeah. Let's see. I like, I have blacked out before. And... I think it was on, like, three and a half shots. <laughs> but I didn't eat at all before. Yeah. And um, that wasn't smart. Eat before you drink. Um, and then every, or most people that I've told that afterwards, they're like, well, Day, you're so tiny. Like, of course it's not going to take that much. Yeah. But that... I didn't like that just because I don't like knowing what I've, not knowing what I've done. Mm -hmm. But then I drank like four, five shots. I didn't count. Um, Let's just be real. I didn't count at like a party we had three weeks ago and I didn't black out then. And I also, I drank some water and I had like a ton tiny hangover but I'm also I threw up so much you did throw up a lot which probably helped yeah and I'm pretty sure I was still drunk the next morning Yeah, because I felt kind of out of it in like a not hangover way yeah. until like 1 p.m yeah I did actually I went you know I had a lot of deep thoughts ready and I did yeah. come up with one reason why being a lightweight would be inconvenient. Okay. Okay, and that one reason is, is that if you want to play a drinking game, it is easier if people's alcohol tolerances are more similar to each other. Mm-hmm. And I think it's easier to get them similar higher than it is lower. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because, like, if three is, like, gets you really feeling it... Yeah. Then that's a lot different than someone who is, like needs like seven to really feel it right whereas like the difference between six and eight is like not that different you could play a drinking game if that was like yeah some sort of marker for those two people but between like two and like five that's just really different it's i think it's hard to play a drinking game if you're a total lightweight now what if that total lightweight just ate a bunch of food there's like still carbs. there's limits to that. I don't yeah. think that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we just have to become friends with only lightweights I mean, and make sure they stay that way. That could be an option. I guess maybe I think it's just I think some people well, I don't know. I guess you just keep it to like you know, yeah. you have like a fourth of a drink in every drinking game. Right. Instance. I guess they yeah. have things where you take a sip. That can be a drinking game is when you take a sip of something. Oh my so God. it just depends what's in it. Can there. we please like watch a movie or something where every time they say something we have to take a sip? We need to do that sometime. Right? Yes. In like May. 
May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be free around May. <laughs> I should be as well. <laughs> okay, good. We'll set the Perfect. date for May then. Okay. Anyway. I, I have weird feelings about hangovers, though, because I feel like I don't... I don't... When I look at, like, how people experience hangover in the movies, that's not really what I feel like happens. Mm-mm. And I don't know if that's because I don't drink enough or right. what it is. But basically... What I ha- I had this like idea in my mind and like every time I drink the next day like all over like my body just feels like good. Like it feels like <laughs> nice and my body feels good. And I was like why is that? Like people say they're in pain, but I realized it's because what I'm feeling in my body is like a light soreness. Like if you were like working out and then your muscles got sore. So I'm feeling like a light soreness, but I love the feeling of being sore. So really, it's just that feeling in my entire body, and I'm so into it. <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah. But what the only bad thing that happens is that I become emotionally unstable the next day. <laughs> that is my that's, hangover. That's an... Yeah. I become emotionally unstable. I feel like I get achy as well. Yeah. I don't like it. You don't like it. I don't like it. I'm in the majority, probably. (laughs) Um, I also, I will get headaches sometimes. Um, I, you mentioning movies, like, whenever I see, like, movies or TV shows and they're, like, hungover, they're like, oh, I can't look at the lights, or, Mm -hmm. oh, you're being too loud. I've never had that. We probably haven't drank enough. I, yeah, I don't think so. We don't binge drink i don't think i'm a little bit confused about the definitions of binge drinking yeah because i've definitely had more than four in a night i think it's over like a two to four hour period of time having like four or more drinks but that would be like one an hour maybe it's like three two to three hours honestly i don't know if what i do is qualified as binge drinking I definitely think I binge drank this last time because I had, like, four shots within, like, 40 minutes, probably. Yeah. Because I, like, downed one, and then was like, let's go for one more, not fully feeling the effects. Yeah. And then it all hit me at once, which shots can do to you as well if you take, like, four shots. You didn't, you weren't actually taking but, shots, no, though, right? No, but I'm just saying, like... You were having four drinks. I was having the same effect yeah. as shots. Mm-hmm. If. So if you want yeah. shots, just down a bunch of lemonade with three shots in it. Don't do that, people. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Yeah. The fastest that I've ever, I think, felt it was I ac- accidentally poured three shots worth in a cup that I usually have one in and then I drank it pretty fast yeah that was actually great though I had super I felt fantastic you were on a cloud I felt you were amazing I think I think some people don't feel as good drinking alcohol like I don't know some like something about their body just doesn't like it as much but my body does it well I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if we should be promoting it this much. No. <laughs> I think we're at the point where, like, ooh, a drink sounds great. We're ready to go. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bad things about alcohol. Like, I think almost every single time I have more than one shot, I throw up some. Which isn't really that big of a deal because I just throw up in general from like most things yeah but like my body rejects it (laughs) my body rejects it yeah yeah which brings us to how did we become this way it sounds like we're just totally out there we're we're out there but we have we're pretty actually I think we're pretty On, like, the lower end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. of, like, how much people drink in college. Oh, yeah. I know that, okay, because I think statistics tell us that actually less people are drinking in college than it maybe appears. Right. Right, but, like, most people are drinking. And I think even though we're drinking, we definitely drink 
less. Or even if we're not drinking less, we have, like, very, like, restrictive views, I think, on our own we personal do. drinking. I mean, like, okay. I think summer we went a little crazy. And the fact that we drank, like, multiple days. Okay, like, more than five days in a month. <laughs> <laughs> more than five days you know month. like Once. more than five times that was crazy <laughs> yeah but i since school started mm-hmm. i think i've drank once and i plan to drink again mm-hmm. after thanksgiving break mm-hmm. but that's probably like it until after christmas <laughs> Right, so you have, like, a very, like, you have plans, right? Yeah. Like, you're thinking about it. I mean, I also am, too. Yeah. But, like, why do you, like, take such a cautious approach to this? Because most people, I think, are just kind of like, it's all fine. We're young. I don't really Might know. Might as well drink now. How much other people think about their own drink. I mean, I think my family influenced me a lot in the sense of, Um, growing up, like, my mom didn't drink hardly at all, but she did talk about how, like, she had drank in the past, and she just didn't really like it, and then my grandma's an alcoholic, and so my mom would comment on that a lot, and also, like, my, my mom thinks my uncle's an alcoholic, I'm just outing family (laughs) secrets, better not listen, uncle, um, and then, like, also, um, my family, I feel like, just has addictive tendencies. Hmm. So, growing up, I didn't want to be that way. And, um, I want, like, I was like, okay, be more like my mom. Well, you don't drink a lot. Or you just are more cautious. And so, I... I was just, like, turned away from alcohol, and then, and I, like, during my entire time of being, like, I'm never gonna drink again, my mom was always a little bit, like, okay, that's great, but don't let me yourself that way, mm-hmm. because she, I think, was worried that I'd be, like, no, I'm not drinking at all, and then suddenly go to, oh, I'm an alcoholic, I'm gonna drink so much, because that's what she's seen, people who have such rigid views kind of go to the other extreme. Well, it's like those people have, who, their families don't teach them about sex, and then they go off to college, and suddenly they have free reign, and they go have a bunch of sex, and they're like, oh my god, I got pregnant in STDs, I had no idea this would happen. Right. So, yeah, like, I just grew up kind of being like oh alcohol is something that you shouldn't really abuse and like I saw the effects of how it like changed my grandma or like how she would have certain things happen to her and I mean yeah yeah I think for me it was kind of it was a couple things I think it was one that when I was like depressed like I relied on some like not great coping mechanisms Mm -hmm. and alcohol was not something I looked to for a a bad coping mechanism and I wanted to like keep it that way I was like keep alcohol in this category of something that's like you don't even have to consider because I feel like once you have a bad coping mechanism then every time you want to like fall back on bad habits all of those things are there and they're ready to comfort you in your moments of like when you're really low right and I don't want that to be in those moments something I even have to like bother with you know so I didn't I didn't want it to become an issue but I think the other thing was which was almost and also because I was like okay I need to like work on not being depressed and I don't feel confident that I could drink all of the time and like not have that affected in some way so I guess it's also just like looking after myself like that Mm -hmm. but the other thing is that I see a lot of like family members like other like people even like in college where they think that 
they have a better time drinking than when not drinking or they need alcohol to have a good time and I think I know people are like, oh, but that's like not really true. And I think, but I think it, I think it is true for some people. They yeah. do have a better time drinking, and so it's always been my goal to be able to have just as good as a time not drinking as while I'm drinking. You know, right. and like be able to connect with friends without drinking, and while drinking, because I don't want to get like dependent on it. And I, I guess I, I think that's the thing is that I am want to be not dependent on something like that and so it's kind of like stubbornness (laughs) like I will not depend on this I will do it myself even though it's more difficult so yeah so that that's a big thing for me like I want to just be able to like laugh with people and like be silly and like not be so stressed out all the time and like that's your connection is that you can like de-stress over alcohol like I want more than that I think also for me, like, alcohol is something that, I mean, I think it happens for a lot of people. Like, you were talking about how you have an easier time talking after you've been drinking. And I feel like for me, I have an easier time telling people certain things. So part of me is kind of like, oh, like, I have a friend who... Um, I haven't talked to in, like, a couple of months, and, like, I'm going through, like, different emotions about it, but sometimes part of me is like, oh, what if I got, like, really drunk, and then just texted her how she was making me feel. Right. And, like, but then I could just blame it on the alcohol if it didn't go the right way, or something like that, and I'm Mm -hmm. like, no, no, no. You're not going to do that. Like, no. If you want to say something, you have to be able to say it sober in order to be able to say it drunk. Right. Yeah, I I also, I don't want, I don't want to put myself, my drunk self in, in this position where there's things that I, like, want to do so much that I won't do them sober, but I know that I right. will do them drunk. So I, I want to keep it so that I would do, like, the same amount of things. Like, yes, I'm definitely more dancey. I'm not that dancey yeah. while sober. So I'm not, like, talking about stuff like that because I think that's just, I don't know. Like, it, it's not the same. I'm not a different person. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like, changing my, like, l- the way that I am with people, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I try to just keep myself the same. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm pretty good. Like, I don't... I haven't done anything super embarrassing while drunk, though. But honestly, I figure it's only a matter of time. (laughs) Yeah, and you also haven't been around that many people. So maybe you do something that's a little embarrassing, but because it's around us, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, I can't think of anything right now. Right. Well, but, but even if I did do something, you'd probably just forget it. Because... Right, because it's just Dagny. You know, it doesn't right. really matter. But say it's like at a big party or you're just with like a couple people that you don't really know. Mm-hmm. You might do something and then be like, oh my God, why did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. I just never wanted alcohol to be like the highlight of my day. Yeah. Because as much as, like, like, this hasn't happened to me, but I can really imagine, like, you go to work, like, it was a stressful day, mm-hmm. like, you did, like, the chores and, like, errands you had to do after work, and, like, you get home, and, like, what do you have? You have alcohol that makes you feel better. I, um, know somebody who drinks quite a bit, and I was looking at their Snapchat story, And it said, like, it was just, like, a photo of, um, just, like, one of those, like, I don't want to say a quote, whatever, I'll just say what it was. It said, like, beer for when your friends don't cut it, or, like, Mm -hmm. when your friends are boring or something. And I'm like, that's, like, this person thought it was so funny or so relevant that they put it on their story. Yeah. I mean, in a general sense, I would think something like that is funny. Yeah, but But then I get real serious and I'm like, no. Right? (laughs) And I think 
that's just like the truth for that person though because they drink so much Mm. and I'm just like that's not where I'm getting at I'm not gonna be like this you know I feel like this is also sort of like both of our like we have sort of like like a mom nature where we're like oh my we don't want to do anything responsible. Yeah. Like also for drinking with other people, we're like, what if other people need help? Like Right. Like, um we definitely are more of the caretakers of our friend group. But even like when I wasn't drinking, I would go to parties. One, because I'm, like, college. Might as well go to parties and, like, actually Mm -hmm. experience them. And two, so I could take care of my friends if they got too drunk. Yeah. And, like, I had to take care of one of my friends the first party. And it was just her clinging to me. Being, like, stay with me. I'm a great on-call designated driver. You are. And now you, too, are also a good designated driver. Because Day finally got her license. Yep. After years of hard work and the trek up the mountain and the test that she almost failed, she's got her license. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, congrats to me. Go you. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely am more than willing to be a designated driver for people. Yeah. More than willing to be. But I'm only if I'm in the mood to party. <laughs> Yeah. So that leads us to a next another question I want to talk about, which okay. I don't know if we have talked about this, but what do we genuinely think about people who drink more than us? Like really? Because I feel like there's a very polite answer of like, oh, of course everything's fine. Like do what you want to mm-hmm. do. But what do you really like? Do you have judgments about people? Um. So, I know I had time to think about this, but, like, I haven't really given that much thought, I guess. But that's also why I can just give my straightforward answer. I feel like, to some extent, if somebody's just drinking and they drink more than me, then I'm kind of like, it's, like, fine. It's, like, whatever. Um, Because they... I have to be able to know that that person honestly knows their limits and won't go too far or is, like, you know, smart about it. But then there's the people who continuously joke about how they're probably an alcoholic, but then they're not really. And they just offhandedly say, oh, yeah, I'm an alcoholic. I feel like I do joke about being an alcoholic. Yeah, you're you're a different lady. Um and I'm just kind of like I have genuine concern for you. Right. No, I I see what you mean. And I don't know how to go about it. So I just worry about them. I feel mm-hmm. like So there are some people that you worry about their drinking habits. Yes. And um I think then I kind of just, like, also if they say they don't drink that much, but I feel like they might drink more than they think they do, you know, or that's, like, their perception that I'll keep an eye out on them. Mm-hmm. I just, I put down on our piece of paper mo- mother-like. Because I feel like right. I'm just kind of mom about it. Like, I just, I worry about if they're being safe, if they need to be getting help. Um, and I think that's, like, an extreme. Like, in the middle where maybe they just, like, if you're blacking out a lot, I worry. Yeah. If you're, like, <laughs> just drink and then start throwing up and, like, maybe can't take care of yourself or, like, don't remember what happened the night before. I worry because, like, that's not good. I just, I worry. You're just worrying. I just worry and have extreme concern for people. What's your answer? (laughs) Well, I think that, so, so people who are, causing short-term harm to them to their themselves that aren't 
like getting alcohol poisoning I'm kind of like yeah like it's fine mm-hmm. like I don't have a I don't have a lot of worries about just like the drinking itself like if people are getting really hung over like if people are like throwing up like I'm not too worried about it just so just that if people are hung over that's their issue well, but if they're, like, home over all the time, <laughs> okay, you yeah. know, I don't know. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> so people who are drinking a lot, it's, like, fine. I don't, I'm, like, that's, like, you. But and but I think it's, it's people that I know have, like, mental health struggles. Mm-hmm. That's when I start worrying too much. <laughs> yeah. Because I see, because, like, it's... It's just projection, right? Like, right. I worry about that for myself. So when I see other people with, like, mental health struggles and they're drinking a lot, I'm worried that that's, like, really bad for it. And they're doing a lot of, like... Sub- they're using it as a crutch. They're using it as a crutch and they're, like, suppressing their real feelings about stuff. And they're basically just using it to block out pain, mm-hmm. you know? And so... Yeah, I so it's so I think it's that I just project. You that. also have this idea that how you truly feel is how you will act when you're drunk. Yes, I do have that theory, and I know some people don't agree. But so if my people, mom's one of them. <laughs> she doesn't agree. No, I. I, this is a tentative theory. I'm not, like, super gung-ho about it, but I do think that, well, I guess if if somebody's drunk, the way they're behaving when they're drunk, I will take that to heart a lot. Like, if people are getting drunk and crying, I worry that they're just really sad all the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people would disagree with me that this isn't true, and that's fine, but I think that, and, like, it's not like I'm, like, insanely happy, I guess. No. But I get really happy when drunk. But I feel like overall, like, I just... I don't know. What I, mean. I mean, we've had pure just times where we're laughing at each other. Like, laughing. Like, mm-hmm. we just look at each other and start laughing, I feel like. Like, we're happy when we're drunk. We're happy when But drunk. I also think for us, like, we... At least for me, I make sure I'm in a happy place yeah. when I drink. Right. Like, this is a very extreme example that I have, but it's something that I did, and I'm kind of like, why did I do this? And I, it's not like I've... I mean, I could stop at any time. But so, I recently broke up with my girlfriend, and I've always said this. I was like, when we break up, I'm like... I need to be sober, mm-hmm. like, for a while. So I'm like, okay, six months, I'm going to be sober. Yeah. So I've just, I've made this decision to go six months being sober, not doing weed or alcohol. And it's kind of, it's a little bit weird to me why I'm, I'm doing this almost, because I'm, like, super dedicated, but I'm like, why exactly? Right. <laughs> why exactly have I decided to do this? And I think it's probably just a little bit my nature is like of overly cautious. I didn't want to use alcohol to numb any sort of pain. Right. And I didn't want to use it to excuse behavior that I was like, this is not good behavior to do. Mm-hmm. And so I decided that it would take six months for me to trust myself. Like, that's a long time. I don't know. I honestly don't think six months is what you'll need. I don't really think so either at this point. But the point is I, I wasn't sure, so I was like, yeah. better be careful. Right. And now I feel like it's like this test that I've set for myself. But honestly, like, I do enjoy drinking in college, and now I've just sort of cut myself off from it. So I really, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> yeah, you keep mentioning to me that because of this thing, you'll spend like half of your college experience not drinking. Yeah. And, but I don't know. The thing is, 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 also, I was watching a lot of Grace and Frankie. Oh, yeah. And they drink constantly. Like, constantly. all of them must be alcoholics. Like, it's insane. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that looks like a great life to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly, I don't think I need this, like, very, like, 
it's a very dramatic thing that I've done. Yeah. But now the problem is that I've done it. I'm too stubborn and I'm like, you think I can't do it? No. Like, I will do it just to prove everyone wrong. But I'm like, who are you proving this to? Right. Because that would have mean that I spent less than a year drinking in my entire life. Before you cut yourself off. Before I cut myself off. And like you... We, I feel like, don't have an issue with drinking. Because we're kind of like, today, this weekend would be a great time to drink. Like, let's drink this weekend. And then the weekend comes and we're kind of like, oh, were we going to drink? Never mind. No, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I would allow myself when I break up with somebody and it's like actually like a breakup Mm -hmm. um, to really just like let myself drink one night. Yeah. And then put it away for a little while and act, cause I'll, I'll have, I'll be having feelings come up for a while. Right. So if you like, just like put it away, find my other, like addiction with sugar or maybe not. Right. I mean, I have other but, bad coping yeah. mechanisms. It's not right. like I'm like, oh yes, now that I haven't drank, I am perfect and I right. just do no. yoga and I meditate to work out all my feelings. <laughs> but like. Yeah, like, I will go to other ones, but I feel like alcohol is just something you can abuse so quickly and without noticing that it's also, I think, because of, like, my family history and everything, I'm just kind of like, push that away. Yeah, I don't even know if it's my family members specifically, but I definitely think something triggered, like, a fear in me Mm -hmm. of alcohol, yeah, like, misuse. And I think, but, but it's not something I'm, like, actively afraid of, but it's more, like, or like, I'm very resolved to have it not become a problem, and I'm confident that I know how to do that, and so I just enact that, even if it seems, like, very counter to, like, many social practices. Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. Yeah. But I think the lesson in this is that you should... Do what feels right for drinking for you. Yeah, I don't think my... Well, my philosophy might work well with other people. But, like, I don't think my ideas about drinking are what everybody should do. I'm in no way preaching that everybody should do drinking the way I do and wait, like, so long to start drinking and, like... I do think that everyone should try to be a lightweight. I don't understand why everyone doesn't adopt that. Right. It's cheaper. It's better for you. And it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like it's like the best option. I mean. I know. I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Yeah. So that one maybe you should do. But everything else. Everything like, else. Just like, It's just my story. You have your own story. Do what feels good. Yeah. Don't drink away your issues. No. 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 Yeah. For this podcast, I was reading this list of, like, things to do to stay safe Mm -hmm. when you're drinking. And a funny one on there is carry condoms. (laughs) Yeah, I noticed that one. (laughs) I'd like to tell all of our listeners that when you go drinking to a party, bring condoms because... I don't care if that's not you. You might be having sex when you didn't think you'd be having sex. Or, like, your friend might want to have sex, be super wasted as well, but not carry condoms. So then you can give one to your friend so they can be safe. I've low-key considered buying condoms to give out to people in cases of need. But then I was like, you don't have the budget for that. Don't buy other people condoms. Although I could get some for free. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I think, um, one that I didn't see on the list, but I kind of am realizing more and more with myself, I think, even, is that you should pace yourself, but, like, wait for it to actually kick in. Like, I know a lot of people who, like, take a shot or two, and then they're like, it 
I don't feel the effect. So then they take like four more or maybe it's only two more so that they can like feel the effects. But then it just hits them like bam, 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 all the shots. And they're just really out of it and drunk. Yeah. And like I think you just got to... Like, it takes a little while to kick in in the beginning, I feel like. But just, like, wait for it. Don't just, like, yeah, go hardcore at the beginning. And eating and drinking is very Drinking important. liquids. Drinking. Other than alcohol. Yes, drink water. <laughs> drink liquids that aren't yeah. alcohol. Water. Drink some water. That's, drink something water-based. <laughs> I put drink lots of water before, during, and especially afterwards. Yes, especially after, if not during. Because I feel like you can get caught up in the moment right. if it's a short amount of time. But I've but, noticed if I drink water afterwards, like, I'll just put, like, a cup by my bed, mm-hmm. drink one glass, and then have, like, another one. It helps with my hangover so much. Dagny's special hangover cure is to drink (laughs) a quart of almond milk before you go to bed and one when you get up in the morning. (laughs) Yeah, I've never done that. I should really try it sometime. Yeah. But I just, I find it so funny that almond milk is your cure. (laughs) It's as simple as that, people. (laughs) I know. I honestly, I don't think it's doing anything aside from the fact that it's hydrating me with like some, like a little bit of fat in it. You know? Yeah. It's just a placebo. It but, but it's the mental image of like drinking the whole, cause I just, I have those like, those cardboard like carton things yeah. and I just drink it right out of there. And that's very satisfying for me. Maybe what you need is an interesting container to drink your water mm. from. So you feel like you really want to drink it. I sent you a water bottle. That will get me going. That does it for days. <laughs> that does it for days. For yeah. a long time. <laughs> but, yeah. You took my other one, eating. Like, eat first, before you drink. Although, my see, my issue with that is that, and maybe this is your issue as well, if you have my health issues, is if I eat, then I worry I'm just going to throw that up. Especially mm-hmm. if I'm really nauseous. Which, if I'm nauseous, I shouldn't be drinking. You should just not drink. But, like, if I eat, then I'm like, oh no, now I'm gonna drink and then throw up. Maybe and you then need to drink, like, food. slower. Maybe that would help. Yeah, but, like, well, I guess there have been times where I've drank, like, one cider over, like, 40, 30 minutes. Yeah. That was better. Also, if you're going to a party, be mad eye moody about your drink. Yeah. Don't let people slip stuff in. Uh uh-uh. uh. Constant vigilance. Uh huh. Don't let people give you a drink. You get your own drink. Get your own drink. Know what's in your drink. I have to admit, I only wanted to say that because I like to tell people they should be mad eye moody <laughs> on their beverages. Bring a flask like... and only drink from the flask at the party. Be that person oh, I, and send me a I picture like of it when you do that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Email us, people. Um, basically, misled at gmail.com. <laughs> Smooth plug there. Yep. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Driving is a very touchy thing, I feel like, mm-hmm. because I'm very... I'm very black and white about it, and I think there's probably somewhere in the middle that is maybe, like, the best. I don't know if there is a best, but I'm like, you have any drinks, like, don't drive. Like, plan not to drive. And Mm -hmm. I know that people can have, like, one drink at dinner, and then they think it's fine to drive home, but honestly, I don't trust anyone under, like, 26 right, to be able to really have one drink with food and then drive home safely. I think it matters... The type of alcohol. Because, like, if you have, like, a glass of wine. Well, actually, wine's Anyone very Anyone under high. 26, I don't, yeah. I don't trust people. See, there. I think if you have, like, a very low alcoholic beverage, maybe it's fine. But, like, but it but has one, to be. But one drink is, like, that. To, that's, that's, like, a standard amount is one Yeah. Drink. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I know for myself, I could never, like... Until I build up more of a tolerance, mm-hmm. I feel like I can't 
right. drive home. Like, I don't trust myself. And I don't right. want to put myself in that position. And I definitely, that's one thing. I look down on people who drive. That drunk. is, I, I didn't think I, of that. Yeah. That is, that's true as me like, as well. I, I'm like, oh, you did that. Okay. That's your life, but it's also everybody else's life that's on the road. Right. And that's, I mean, I don't even, I don't know if there's a good way to convince people of the seriousness of, like, driving drunk. But, like, I all, like, I'm just, like, there's, like, everyone's baby is on the road. Like. Yeah. Don't, don't do that to people. Like, mm-hmm. don't drive home. Get an Uber. Take the bus. Bring someone who's, like, hasn't been drinking. Right. Like. Like, or call up your friend. Like, even just. Right. Call your friend who's at home, you know, has a... Ask them before this happens. Like, mm-hmm. ask, hey, like, if I decide to drink tonight or, like, if the bus is coming, like, in the in an hour, because buses at night run, mm-hmm. like, on an hour schedule, be like, could I call you up? And Right. Or if you don't drink, and, like, obviously this is up to you, but be that friend who tells people that you know are going to be out drinking that they can call you yeah. if they need a ride home. My mom was always that person, even though I never drank. Like My mom home. was too. She was like, it doesn't matter, like, where you are, like, how much you've been drinking, like, I will, like, come pick you up. Like, mm-hmm. just call me. Yeah. And so, like, I try to be that person for other people. I don't know if anyone, like, I don't know how many people, like, really take that that, like, aren't close to me. Because I do say that to some other people. Mm. Where I'm like, if you, like, if you, like, need a ride back, like, if you've been drinking, like, I will come pick you up. Like, just, like, call me. Yeah. You know? And so, like, being that person is also very important, I think. Right. No, I definitely feel like now I'm able to be that person because I have my license and I really, I don't know. It's the mother part of me. I'm just like, <laughs> let me come pick you up, sweetie. Be safe. Like, right. I mean, I would rather have people call me. I think the thing is, is I'd rather have people call me at like 2.30 a.m. Like, yeah. and have me wake up than for people to be driving drunk because that's just, it's I feel better. like that's just a no-brainer for me. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's like, that's what you do when people have been. Right. No, I mean, like, when people have been not planning. Like, if it's a recurring thing, obviously, like, they need to plan stuff for them. But, like, I don't know, in a tight situation. Yeah. Well, on that note, our question to end today's PSA is, do you know a plant that is fed only beer despite everyone's better judgment and goes by the name of Lucy? That's a real question. Yeah. I hope they know this point. Mm-hmm. Good news. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, CastBox, and Messy now. Just search for Basically Misled. Tell us your closest held secrets at basicallymisled at gmail.com. Seriously, people. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening, listening and, and good, good luck, luck with, with your future endeavors. endeavors.